sold my soul to the bottle Still none of my friends have left me yet I'm the same man I was since the age of 13 And I've lived my life with no regrets If you're looking for some freedom All it takes is ten drinks minimum If you're looking for five more reasons All it takes is ten Oh, hello. Welcome to Ten Drink Minimum. It's Sunday night. It's the last party of the weekend. We've got Holly Ann with us. Hi, everybody. Yeah. James Smiley's here. Hello. And, of course, Ray Basura. Hello, Albuquerque. Hopefully everybody's staying well, staying safe. And I'm your host, Chris. Well, we were supposed to have a guest today, but I don't. Uh, he hasn't. Oh, now he saw it. He just well. Knew. I'm telling you, Chris, as a filmmaker writer, this is how you build suspense. This ah. is movie making 101. Ah, here we go. He's making yeah. an entrance. Yeah, exactly. There we go. There we go. There um, he is. What's going on? I'm, uh, I'm late. Yeah, that's all right. From uh, the TV show uh, Rebel Without a Crew, we have Alejandro Montoya Maran. Did I say that right? No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> but. Yeah, the, to the to the two people that saw this show, right? Whatever, I watched the whole thing on uh, Friday. The what? Sorry, I watched the whole show on Friday. I, I binge watched. You it. were saying you were saying that, dude. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah. So uh, for people out there who don't know, there was a uh, what two years ago, um, Rob Rodriguez. He decided to for the 25th anniversary of uh, El Mariachi. Yeah. He decided, which he made for seven thousand dollars all by himself. Yeah. Wrote, directed, uh, ran the camera, uh, lighting, everything. He decided to make a TV show where um, he brought in five filmmakers and he gave them seven thousand dollars and two weeks to make a movie. And Alejandro was uh, he was on that show, and it was on the El Rey Network. Um, and your movie was called Monday. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, man. Yeah, I have a beer here. So tell us, so tell us what, what, I mean, you know, you've done other stuff since then and we'll get to that, but that's like, you know, I met you a long time ago, like at, I think Blackbird one night way back in the day. Yeah. Like I, th I want to say five, I was still living downtown. Right. Because we met, I got, we had a couple of drinks at Blackbird and shit. Yep. Yep. And you hadn't, you know, you weren't, you weren't there yet. So how did you get uh, picked to do this show? That show? Well, I mean, first of all, how's everyone doing? Is everyone Bro, right. safe? Everyone healthy? Everyone? Yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. Your background is yeah. better. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, Holly's a comedian. Ray, he, he right. was a professional wrestler. He just retired. And then James, he does a lot of background extra work in movies and TV. <laughs> just to give you a little background, everybody. Yeah, man. I've, uh, I've, I've, I've seen your show a couple of times. I like, tune yeah. in for... Uh, Amanda's stream for for quite a bit. I was giving you. Oh, shit. Okay. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we were shooting the shit or something. Yeah, but, and then, uh, go for it. No, that's awesome. Thank you for having me. The um, uh, this is this is cool because it's kind of like we're just shooting the shit and having beers. Mm -hmm. That's it. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that is our show. Yeah. yeah, I I have a ton of questions about like that about all of it because like you had a you had a short film that that uh, oh, came out on YouTube on Friday. Yeah, called Perps. Oh, Holly. yeah. Did, did Holly watch it? Did you guys watch it? I watched it. I didn't get an opportunity to see Perps, no. Ah, man. It's pretty cool. I it's really it. funny. I loved it. Yeah, it was really good. But yeah, Holly was just putting it over before we were, we were starting. Yeah. Um, how... Like, have you always been uh, here in Albuquerque, or, or are you a transplant like me? I'm, I'm from southern New Mexico, uh, moved up to Albuquerque. No transplant. I was uh, I was born in Laredo, Texas, and then raised in Monterrey, Mexico, and uh, Merida, Merida, Yucatan, in Mexico. Very cool. Oh, wow. 
pretty cool. Well, like when you watch Rebel Without a Crew, they kind of tell like a little bit of his backstory. Like when you were in like what the seventh grade or sixth grade, some your yeah. teacher told you you weren't gonna mount to anything better than a cab driver. Like that yeah. So I don't want to because like <laughs> let's let's talk about the hierarchy of that comment back in the nineties in Mexico. So there was no Uber. There was no, you know what I mean? So what he was basically saying is you're going to make minimum wage and you're never going to go anywhere. But he said it in front of everyone in my classroom. Oh, dang. And it was like, I couldn't, you know, like I couldn't fucking like, oh, I'll fight you. First of all, he was like really tall. So he beat the shit. Out of <laughs> Second of all, as the teacher and I was like the class clown, no one's going to fucking back me up in class. Right. You know what I mean? So right. when he said that, dude, I was like, oh, I hate you so much because I don't know. Like, you you know, you know, there's potential, you know, you know, whatever. But I uh, yeah, I hated that motherfucker because he he got me suspended. I think that day and then my mom and my dad grounded me for like a whole week. And it, was, it was horrible. I couldn't watch TV or music for a whole week. You were like this motherfucker. I'm going to make you <laughs> pay when you guys got grounded in like junior high or high school i mean is high school too much to be grounded uh yeah no i was grounded all the time in high school <laughs> me too i was never <laughs> grounded we had a lot of land and my every time i was in trouble my dad would go make me like work in the like on the property and that was way worse than being grounded yeah. <laughs> exactly that right there. Like, like like sweep and mop the floor in the whole house and like yeah. Oh, now you're going to dust your sister's room. And I'm like, fuck. Whereas other friends, when they would get like uh, suspended or whatever, I would ask them, like, what did you do? Ah, oh, man, I played Killer Instinct all day. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, that sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, my mom's in the chat, so she can tell you, like, if I was a good kid, I didn't get grounded. I was always sure. <laughs> it means you never got caught. Well, yeah, Chris, did you, did you, were you a problem child? You don't see, he doesn't seem like you would be. My sister yeah. was. I was the good one. You the do seem like you, you're a little mischievous, though. You look oh. like you did lots of mischief. Uh, I like. I grew up like on a farm, so I mean, there was a lot of farming going on. So, like, you know, you get up early in the morning and do you know chores, and then after work do chores. So, you know, it wasn't a lot of time to you know get into shit. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I didn't drink until I was like out of school. All that stuff, you know, didn't do drugs. What about all the, the small town antics, Chris? I got an all kinds of small town mischief that I would have been probably arrested for in Albuquerque. Well, I mean, my friends <laughs> and I, would, we would drag race, you know? Like, we would try to see who could, you know, and you, you'd go out on a highway, and we had it marked off for a quarter mile, and, you know, one person would get in the other lane, which is insane, because, you know, you could head on into somebody, but then we would race, like, everyone, everyone had to race to see whose car was faster, you know? A lot of small town antics like that. And then... Uh, awesome. over to Mexico, like north of Clovis and mm. around there. I mean, you you definitely take guns out and shoot at things, you know. <laughs> Still do, huh? Yeah. Well, like you know, you shoot like the transformer box <laughs> off of a you know highline pole, just shit like that. And you- uh, in my hometown, we used to get yarn and we'd stretch it between two telephone poles and we'd wait in the bushes and wait for a car to like drive up on it. Because yeah. it wouldn't cause any damage to the car, but I just they like they'd slam on the brakes. We all would laugh and run away, and I didn't realize <laughs> later on like that's like that's super dangerous. What if they like lost control and like drove off the road, and we just witnessed like somebody die? Can I say oh. something right now? Sure. Yeah, I used to do exactly what you did, Ray, but I would yeah. put rocks in the middle of the road, big. Yeah. Uh-huh. because people would fucking like if it was a thirty-five miles an hour, they would go seventy. Right, right, and they would fucking haul ass, and we would be playing like get the fuck out of the way, whatever. So we started putting rocks so people would start slowing down, and a couple of them would go. You just hear pa pa. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Well, good to see you have criminals all over the show today. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> bunch of hooligans. <laughs> yeah. I only did some extremely minor arson when I was a child. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure James is I, I was a prankster. And yeah. me and my friends one time shit in a bird bath Ooh. <laughs> of a teacher who was really racist. Um, oh, all right. All right. That's probably the worst thing I ever did. But that's did the teacher deserve it? Yes, she deserved it. But uh yeah, I mean the other stuff. 
my family doesn't really know about, so I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, no, let's hear it. I mean, now's the time. Let's do I mean, it. How could they find out from this? I don't know. Just clip it, send it to him. Today is the today's the day your mom's like, uh, are your parents together? No, not anymore. Or is your mom with someone? No. Well, then she's just like, well, I'm going to go check out Holly's live stream. <laughs> the first time she's like, well, you know what? I'm in quarantine. Checks it out. You just open up to like the worst shit. I know. She knows about that one. So uh, <laughs> she knew it was me before. Well, they heard about it like in a PTA meeting or something, and my mom immediately knew. They show the picture. That. She's like, holy shit. I, I know. Her <laughs> surveillance shots. <laughs> you know, oh, God. Like one, two, three. So she had to be on the first one so yeah. she could be on the top one and the surveillance camera shots. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. That's so, a great prank, by the way. So, uh, um, oh, I also shit in a Hello Kitty gift bag one time wow. and left it for somebody. Wow. Of all of them, you're the shitter one, huh? Wow. I know. <laughs> have, you, have you not shit on something? Yeah, I have <laughs> never, never. She's all shat, shat in, a, in the mall in one of the, the Holy. booths. We Honestly, I think I've always been just a shy shitter in life, so I wouldn't be able to do that as a prank anyway. Right. And, <laughs> One time I had to poop whenever I was on the La Luz trail, and that was the most traumatizing thing that ever happened to me. That's like the busiest trail <laughs> on the Sandias, and like I'm having to hide like five feet away from people and take a shit. It was awful. The worst. <laughs> wow. Uh, Pretty bad. Good guy. Yeah, that sounds bad. <laughs> yeah. I don't do that anymore, though. And they're going to ask Alejandro. Uh, I saw that show you were on the other night, the one they talked about shit the whole time. <laughs> Great show. Which one? I just go. <laughs> There's a bunch of them. <laughs> right. All these times I'm shitting. All these Sorry, times. guys. So I showed uh, on Friday night, I did a, a little uh, happy hour show and I showed your some of your movie, The Perps. Oh, and okay. people said it reminded them of Kevin Smith. So I, th- I thought you might, you might like that. Oh, dude, I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. I really like him since, since I was a kid. Like, I actually, I think I was introduced to Clerks the same time around I was introduced to. Uh, Desperado, no, not Desperado, Mariachi. Uh, yeah, because I think that I look and and don't quote me, but I think one of them was on HBO, and I want to think that was when Mariachi, and the other one was on pay per view. So I was watching those movies at the same time. So to me, like the late, the early nineties, like uh, there's people that don't know Near Dark. Catherine yeah. Bigelow is the best fucking movie. Yes. Oh. Well, hang on. Point Break. <laughs> oh. That's a good film. Everyone's got a special place for that. Yeah, what about Point Break is like one of those Chris would do a pitch on where he's like, "Okay, hear me out." Yeah. <laughs> I like, I like one of our one of our segments on the show is uh, is movie pitches. Like we will we all pitch a movie and they have to guess what it is. And and it just you know it's like when you do Smokey and the Bandit, you're like, okay, so <laughs> they got it. These billionaires want beer in Florida. Yes. And they can't get it because of the law. So they're trying to get it shipped there. And they keep getting pulled over. The trucks keep getting pulled over by the cops. So they hire a truck driver and his friend who has a Trans Am. And, <laughs> yeah, it's, Trans Am. Awesome. and it's just like and it's just like the worst sounding movie. And you're, and, you're, and you're like, literally someone did that. And people are like, give them the money. You know? And, <laughs> and Point Break, it's like, okay, there's these surfers. And they just want to surf all year <laughs> round. And yeah. uh, so they rob banks. So that they could just surf all the time, <laughs> you know. Give me the money. Is that, a, movie? Is that a big movie? I know that's a big movie here. I've seen it, but I, I just like yeah. I didn't identify with it. Po- Point Break. No, 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 no. Uh, smoking smoking the band. Oh, it was huge when oh. I was a little boy. That movie was all over the place. And then, I mean, they made three of them. Shit. Yeah. It's it's just it's a weird thing because it was like like you know Kevin Smith movies they're. If I wanna, I think the first one that showed in Mexico was Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Oh wow! wow. Because it's a very different kind of humor and different kind of pop culture references, so it would never hit. Yeah. Like the first Wes Anderson movie that screened was uh, was Rushmore, but only for a week. Oh wow! Because no one went to see it. They're all. <laughs> no one went to see it. I was with two friends, and there was another person or two in the front, and that was it. They're all Weird. stupid foreign movies. Right. 
That makes no sense. <laughs> Wes Anderson are the foreign films of America, pretty much, right? Mm-hmm. They kind of are. They kind of are. Yeah, no, nah, you can't compare uh, those movies to like Brett Ratner. No, oh shit, no. I love Wes Anderson, but I remember when I first saw Rushmore, I was just like excited to see it, and I thought of it in kind of a Kevin Smith vein, mm-hmm. yeah. and then I saw it, and I was just like, I hated it right away, and I was like. And then it took me a couple more times, and I was like, you know what? I think this is actually brilliant. Dude, it, I, fucking, I loved it so much. I bought the soundtrack because right out of the outside of the uh, yeah outside of the movie theater, there was a there's a uh, not a record store, not even video store. It was a record store. So I bought the CD, and then I drove to a party, and I blasted the CD. Then I came out with the CD to the party, and I blasted it at the party. I just played the whole soundtrack. Oh wow! Nice. <laughs> it was fucking great. Everybody was like, Ugh, "Some people were, some people were, but there were some people." My my friend Davo Oramas, David Oramas, he loved the 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 Who song that's in like track number ten or something. I think it was like ten. Let's see here. I gotta look it up. I'm gonna find this out because <laughs> no, no, no. bullshit. Track number ten, you said. I think it's uh, ten. A, a quick a uh, quick one while he's away. The Who. Yes. Okay. Hell yeah, that one. I remember playing that at the party like three times. <laughs> oh wow! I, I guess I never looked at the soundtrack. It's actually pretty pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Like probably half his budget is the soundtrack. That's fantastic. I love a filmmaker that like takes. Uh, I I personally take a lot of time in in the in the, in the music for a movie because I love the way it makes me feel when a when a filmmaker knows exactly what song to put in, it makes you feel like, like you can never hear where is my mind and not think fight club, even though the song came out like more yeah. than. Years ago. Yeah. Well, like uh, uh stuck in the middle with you for uh, yeah. Yeah, every oh, time yeah. I hear that every time. Hello. I see that. Fantastic, fantastic. So uh, yeah, Wes Anderson is definitely one of those filmmakers for me that like uh, Cameron Crow does that shit. He like writes the script and he writes the, he writes the songs in the scenes. Like Me next too. door. Oh, nice. Well, uh, speaking of that, you you use some of the local Albuquerque bands in some of your stuff. Like you've used the Red Light Cameras. Um, I think you've used uh, Prison Bitch. Is that right? I used both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we used the Tubers. We used uh, uh, Stem Ivory. We've used Stem Ivory. Yeah, those four bands we've used. Nice. Yeah, definitely. Like they're they're always been super supportive and always are like, hey, you need a you need a song, whatever we could do. And actually, they're in my next movie, uh, the Millennium Bugs. They're in as a band. Oh, damn. Yeah, they play a band that's called the Zombabies. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, so how did you like first decide? When, when did you first decide, hey, I'm going to be a, a director or a writer? Or I'm going to get in the film industry. When did you decide that? I think I was like 13. I was pretty young. No, sure. yeah, like 13. But yeah. I didn't know that it existed. I had to do a play in order to get extra credit to pass a class. Yeah. So I had to set up the whole thing and bring my friends to acting and the wardrobe and all that shit. And then when that was really successful in class, because we did this whole fucking show. That's why I think Rushmore identified with me, because when I saw it when I was eight, yeah. I was like, <laughs> Scarface. The next Fisher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was just watching. Like on YouTube, you can just watch the plays from Rush War, and uh, like just the scenes. And I was watching. It. I love the Vietnam one. That's so amazing. What is uh, Esposito? Yeah, <laughs> Esposito. Yeah, I love it. So then, uh, um, but like, what was the first thing you ever filmed? Like, what are they made besides the play? And you know what sucks? I think they're all like burned or lost. But yeah. the first thing I filmed was a Star Wars movie. Oh, of course. <laughs> cool. For real. A, a shitty Star Wars movie that the letters were like in my in a cardboard box and then like someone would like roll them up as I had the camera. And then I <laughs> Yeah, it was horrible. And then I edited it on my VHS tape to another VHS tape and I would put the music with my tape deck and a vinyl yeah. and a vinyl player. Wow. <laughs> then it would go to the TV. And then you make your parents watch it, and they'd be like, "Okay, we got. We'll sit down and watch." No, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> After that, I did another Star Wars movie because it was like super popular. That everyone was like, "Well, you know, if you want us to come and act," so I was like, "All right, we'll do it." But then I did a Vietnam movie. Oh shit! I'm not fucking with you. And it was called 
Platoon 59 or some shit. And I, I'm, I'm, I think one of my friends from Medida has it. Wow. I'm going to find that. that the, the Star Wars one are lost. They're mm-hmm. lost. I have no idea where they are. But the, 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 the Vietnam movie, it still exists. On VH. Yeah. As, as soon as you make your first, like, you know, mega million movie, that one will show up and they'll be like, directed by Alejandro Montoya de Moran. Yeah, and right, it'll, now, it'll, right now, it, 2040. It, it'll pop out. Man. Oh, man. Yeah, I did a bunch of, I did that. And then when I moved to Monterrey, I just kept doing the whole, um, just shooting with my friends, but with no real education, just, just yeah. shooting. Like I was always, I was going to the movies like three times a week, man. Like I lived in the movie theater. Well, go, when you time. watch, when someone watches, like, and you can go on YouTube, and it's like I think it's like ten bucks for the standard definition or fifteen for the high definition. But you can watch uh, Rebel Without a Crew. You can watch every episode. It's like twelve oh, episodes. Bucks? That's not bad at all. Yeah, and um, it's really interesting because like you know they, they picked five people from all over, and when you're watching, you know, like basically it's it's Project Greenlight but with like five directors, writers and directors instead of just one, which I actually think is better. But one thing I noticed is like you like were the most technical by far. Like you knew like the cameras, you knew like, you know, your way around all the equipment. Most of the other people kind of didn't really know that stuff. It seemed. Yeah, no, I, I tried to, um, before we went there to like familiarize myself because it's like, I'm not going to go and, and just, well, as I get there, try to figure shit out because it's like, you already have like my stupid dog is in the the camera. That's okay. (laughs) (laughs) It happens to all of us. Yeah. We like the dog. Oh, he's so cute. Well, most of us. He's a cute guy. Not Ray. Ray doesn't like dogs. (laughs) (laughs) Hey. I like dogs. So, uh, no, we, you know, I, I just, you know, started to uh, familiarize myself with it. And like, I kind of program myself to not, if I don't know something, it's don't mm-hmm. get too pissed, just work it out or find a plan B. Right. Because right. The cameras are there, dude. And I swear to God that no matter how much self-control it is, yeah. or you have, it wears out by the second week. Well, yeah. Cause you guys had like what, five days of pre-production and then you, then two weeks from the I'll movie. I'll be honest with you, man. They say that, Fuck it. I'm gonna say it now. They say five days. It was really two. Yeah. Well, they like for the for you guys who haven't watched it. So basically, what they did was is they walked into the house that they were living. They all had to live in the house, yeah. and they walked in and they said, "We're gonna do a, a location scouting." And it was basically a binder, and they laid it on the table, and they go, "Here you go. Pick out your locations for the movie." And these guys yeah. had to pick out their locations sight unseen, just by pictures in a binder. Just by pictures, because I remember going in one of them, I was supposed to find a house, and I was like, whoa, this house is perfect. And then I said, I was like, wait, 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 is there a backyard? Because the action team takes it backyard. And I remember, I fuck, I remember feeling this gut, this thing in my stomach because I asked Steve. Yeah, yeah that's his name, yeah. Yeah, Steve, like, hey, man, like, does this have a, a pool or a backyard? And he goes, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. That's what he yeah, said. That was his fucking comment, and I'm like, "Yep, okay." Yep. And so then, uh, so then the next day or a couple days later, they got to hire their actors, and basically they just walked them into this large warehouse and had like two thousand actors standing around, and they had two hours to like do uh, um, uh, audition. Two hours, about right? I'm talking with you guys, I, it's yeah. all on camera. Yeah. All on camera. Yeah. And it's pretty insane. It was so awesome. then, and so then you have like two weeks to make a movie and you guys had like, a, you had limitations on time, right? Like you had to, you had to either do a day shoot or a night shoot and you had like so many hours you could shoot. Yeah. So you could only, sh- we, so a regular shooting date is 12 hours, right? But because we were the, the house that Robert got us and El Ray got us was like an hour away from Austin. So you have to take into consideration going and heading back. So that's two hours from so from ten. That's two plus thirty minutes of um, lunch. It was lunch. Was it thirty or forty? I don't remember. It was lunch, but also thirty minutes to pack and thirty minutes to unload. So it really just gives you like nine hours. Yeah, and then uh, some yeah. shit like that. it was like eight. I want to say I, I say nine, but Ryan is like no eight. Yeah. Right, uh, my DP. He yeah. will. He will. He'll confirm it. So the crazy thing is, is like, you know, everyone had like drama, 
you had so someone right at the very beginning, someone hacked into your bank accounts and like in you know, all your accounts and like stole everything. So that was like the first thing that happened to you. My then, Facebook account was hacked, and right. in my Facebook account, I've had I've like written my account. I've not done that anymore, but uh, I've written my accounts and shit. So they were like, "Hey, I was getting texts like, are you?" Are you? Oh, by the way, I didn't get text. I got emails because they took my phone away and they gave us yeah. a phone. So I'm just getting nonstop emails of them like, "Hey, did you try to make this thing uh, expense? Did you try?" To make oh wow! Yeah, dude, it was fucking weird. Well, then uh, your backpack got ran over and it had your laptop in it with the, with the movie on it. And with then, other than those two things, like, but the crazy thing. Of the first day but the crazy thing is you just kind of were like well fuck it let's go we gotta go we got we got stuff to do and you were just like it's like the movie's gotta be made and like all these other people they would have drama and it would just be like meltdown city crying and you're just like backpack got ran over let's just keep going someone yeah. had stole my money well ah, we just gotta keep rolling dude i was the way i started my head i swear to god uh ray holly can i call you smiley that's better yeah. smiley. that's yeah that's my name, that's name yeah that's badass. Like, like for real, man. Like I, I was just like, figure it out later, man. Just go, yeah. just, just go. Yeah. Cause it's so easy to get caught up, man, because there's so much shit that goes around, man. There's yeah. just so much shit. And well, then it's like it, the, the above pressure that you have to screen at South by. Yeah. So as a filmmaker, I don't want to fucking screen something that's a piece of shit, you know, yeah. like, it's like, whoa, I'm going to screen at South by that's, that's one of the biggest film festivals of all time. It's like, it's like, you know, Holly, you want to be, a, you're a comedian. You want to go talk at comedy, you know, in LA, you know, where they have like Judd Apatow and like the, yeah. the craft. like you want, you respect the craft and you respect the people that do the craft. Right. So imagine right. The, the, the thing in the back of my head where I'm like, fuck, I'm going to make this. And then what if it sucks? Because there's no reshoots. You can't reshoot. Yeah. It. yeah. You can't do anything, whatever you have in the can, you're gonna have to put it in, uh, stitch it together, and screen it. Regardless. Well, then, uh, then like Robert Rodriguez would just pop in and like visit sets, and he would go around to the other people and he would like give them all kinds of like notes and stuff. He would be like, "Here's what I would have done, or I'd film it this way." He like shows up to yours, you're filming, and then he's like, "Crap, man, I just want to have a camera." He's like, "I want to be." <laughs> filming as well or like then one of the scenes yeah. he goes when your movie's done just tell me how you did it so i can learn yeah no. wow. you guys you're fucking robert rodriguez dude you're a fucking genius <laughs> and he's just like he has like no notes for you no i mean i'm sure you did but they did not show him on the and he's just um, like he, watching he was, i'm not i'm not doing it to toot our horn because it's not just me but the actors like he was he noticed something that I think is on the show where he was asking me, like, were you editing in your head while you were shooting yeah. that two shot? And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm so I cut here and I'm gonna go to there. So that way you don't have to spend an excessive amount of time if you know you're not gonna do a punch in there. If it doesn't have to be excessive or super important or what's the point of of getting it. So he was very quiet, man. He was very like, but you know, it's it's not every day that you get your you know, one of your idols to stand right behind you and like <laughs> criticizing your shot like this. Well, and the other thing too is well, you were you were filming and you're all, could you guys please get out of the background? Can you guys please move? You're in the shot. And then you back up and you go, I think I just told Robert Rodriguez and them to get out of the <laughs> shot. And, and it was them. And they were like hiding behind cars then, like trying to just not yeah. be in there. I thought that was really hilarious because you're like, because you realized it, I think halfway through that you're like telling them to get out of the way. Yeah. And then you realize you're like, ooh. <laughs> and it's not on the show, but when Robert was there, yeah, there was a car right across the street blasting music, oh, and man. we were to go tell him. And then when they they didn't do like we like it was like three of us going like get the fucking car out of the way, dude. Like you're fucking yeah. up because I think he turned it up a little bit more. But this time I went with Kenny, and I forgot mm -hmm. who else than myself. And like Kenny's like a beast, you know? He's like yeah. fucking huge. So he's like, all right, right, fine. Get the fuck out. Well, then you had a you had a whole thing with the cops because you guys had guns because the scene had guns. Yep. And the cops showed up because someone said that people were just running around with guns outside, which <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. And, and then the guys like basically telling I you, know you know what the big problem was. We shot this in Texas. <laughs> right, right. Right. Everybody's already running around with guns. The yeah. children are running with guns. Yeah. yeah. He kids yeah, right. a dairy queen. With a K forty seven and shit, right? Yeah, 
in in the same breath though, like they say that to you. And then I saw another scene from uh, one of the other guys is and a dude has a gun outside and they never came and said shit to them. Yeah. But I mean, the guy did have a cowboy hat on while he was holding the gun. So that is fair. Yeah. <laughs> get the pass. So <laughs> the one thing, I mean, for, for the, for you guys, if you watch this thing, Alejandro comes off, like he is the nicest guy, which he is. And he's just like, it's, a, it's like the anti-reality show. He's not like fuck all these other people. I'm gonna make the best one. He's all over <laughs> here. And he's like he's like, oh, you didn't get your grip equipment. Well, if I shoot at night and you shoot during the day, you can just use half of mine. It's cool. And I was just like, damn. Uh -huh. He was like the nicest. Nice. Dude, helping well, everyone out. Competition. Once you we found out it wasn't a comp. Like if it was like I told Chris, if I known it was a competition, it'd be like, yeah. Sorry, man. But it was it wasn't, you know, they're just, you know, they're just trying to, you know, they're making art, they're trying to make film just like me. And and you know, like I would expect something like that to be done for me, so might as well. Yeah. Well, the crazy thing too is is after the show came out, they kind of I, I don't know why, or I mean, I mean you're I have seen I haven't seen the other films. I've seen your film, which is called Monday, and we can watch a preview of it here in a little while. But um no one else got like like whenever the El Ray would show like commercials for the El Ray and they would show like you know the Dust Till Dawn brother you would fly by for the you were like the poster child for this TV show like they'd always show you with like a camera on your shoulder and I mean how does how did that feel where all of a sudden you're like on all the marketing material you know they probably had you on a billboard here or there was that weird or what. No, I mean it is weird because like I was like, man, I'm the I'm the overweight one out of the five. I'm the old one out of the five. I was like, <laughs> so in my head, I was like, I don't give a fuck how I look, man. I just want to make a movie. Like, I, you know, like there were a couple of the girls that were like dressing up and hardcore, and I was like in my cargo shorts, wearing a <laughs> gray T-shirt, just going like, I don't care. <laughs> I just want to make the movie. You know what I mean? Like to me, it was oh, a. Yeah. Like the hey, look, El Ray. Yeah, I have it up in the background. I was pulling it up to just kind of show. No, man, I just. So wanted I have a question for you. Um, so I personally find acting and filming and all of that stuff so stressful. Um, I write scripts. Uh, I try to at least, um, and I find that fun. But I cannot handle acting or directing or even being on a film set it stresses me out so much so what is your favorite part of filming and how do you handle the stress of good one everything uh -huh. i've answered this question <laughs> before chris what is that yeah. what am i holding in my hand the mexico film water <laughs> that's right Not yeah, man, i i love to drink i i i um I like to, well, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, every stage is different, right? Like, but being on set is, is, is fucking beautiful. Like, I can get excited because you're, 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 you're seeing, you know, as you're typing the script, which we need more script writers, uh, you have it a certain way. But then make mm -hmm. a movie, you always have to, you have to compromise, but you want to keep it as, as authentic as what you want it to do. So when you're on set and you have, like, I am, I'm lucky, man. I'm fucking lucky. I have, I get to work with my friends and mm -hmm. my friends are my collaborators and I respect what they do. And it's just, it's great because we can, we can push the bullshit aside and just be collaborators. And then right back to having fun as friends. Like, Oh, remember this shot? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Let's do that. You know, just like friends because we all just want to make a good movie. So no, it's, it's, I tried to see the positive side of everything. You know what yeah. I mean? And like, I kind of, I kind of trap shit for me, like for editing. Like what I try to do is I pay my editor way in advance. So mm -hmm. if I'm being lazy, it's up to me to get the job done or else I already spend a bunch of money. So I do little right. things like that to kind of self-motivate me because even when you're tired and even when you're like, I, every time I want to cancel on an editing session, I go. And when I come back, I'm a little tipsy a little bit more inspired and really happy that I went. Cool. Oh, wow. That's you awesome. The, you guys want to see the trailer for his movie from uh, Rebel Without a Crew? Yeah. Absolutely. In the monitor or what? No, watch. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, that's, nope. That's and I'll get a beer. 
All of Chris's Pornhub tabs are up. Oh. Right? <laughs> been canned and you'll need to clear out your things in the next 10 minutes. Hey, is that necessary? What are you doing? I'm breaking over to you. Oh my god, I watched Game of Thrones for Don't you worry. You're gonna find someone new. And now you can afford to take her someplace from me. Hey, if I took your parking spot, I can move. You don't need to get physical. We need you to kill someone. What? Fucking dance. Oh. Rush hour, to the top floor. Better find that fucking I know it's not yours. Hope you get a piece though, watch the top doors. They take the bull by the horn like a battle door. Yeah, on the train next to Tom Ford. Come on, man. Come on. You don't have stamina for shit, man. Fuck you, man. I got asthma. One, two, three, go! Cool. Oh, wow. Fuck. Nice. Thank that you. Was awesome. the same actors from your uh, from your uh, the movie I saw today. Yeah. Well, yeah. you got to take a plus one to uh, uh to the to help you, right? Yeah, I was able to take a plus one, um, and and the actors they were able to come. Uh, like Kenny, Kenny was able to come, and because he's an actor, he was able to ad. Like Robert would have actors help him with other things, and also the other filmmakers. But it just happened that my actors in ad. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, the, the crazy thing is, on the show, one of your best friends was supposed to be the the one of the villains. Yeah. And. Yep. Like you call him and he's like, Hey man, I'm not gonna be able to come. Yep. And that was like the big drama for you. Yeah. <laughs> so you basically changed it was stressful, trust me. It was you changed the character from a male to a female. Mm -hmm. And then you hired, you know, one of the actresses that you saw, uh, or the actors that you saw in the auditions. And then that also was kind of more drama for you because I, I watched the movie before I saw the TV show. Like I went up to Santa Fe and I saw the movie with you guys. You saw that Santa Fe Independent Film Festival. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we'll talk about that here in a little while. But like the thing that's crazy on the show is, is like watching you direct the actors. Like it kind of seemed like you and like the, the, the woman you hired to be the, the, I don't know, cartel person. She, she kind of like had some problems and you guys kind of had like had some strife a little bit. Yeah, we did a little bit, but it was after that. Like, um, yeah. It's it's not easy for 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 actors to adapt to. Well, I mean, it's in any fucking craft, man. Like, yeah. the actors were expected to come in the set, not rehearse. We we rehearsed. We would read it once, twice. I talked to them as we're setting up the camera. They would run it. We would run it once, and then it's ready to shoot, man. Yeah, and you then you'd like, but you would grab her and you'd be like, "Come talk to me," and you'd come take her away from everyone else. And you'd be like, I need you're too rigid. You need to you need to loosen up. Or yeah. you'd tell her you'd be like, We need to come off like this. And then there was a couple of times she was like, Well, that's what my body looks like, you know. And you guys kind of fought a little bit. I was kind of like, Oh wow. Yeah, it's we just, you know we're cool though. We're cool, but I just I didn't, you know, like English is not my, my English is my second language. So if I I don't wanna like I wanted her to like, hey, you're doing it too sexy. Yeah. You know? So when I remember precisely when that was, it's when she she fucking starts unloading at Jock. Yeah. Just bah, 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 she starts killing people. Right. She would come in and she had never played a villain. So she would come in and like she would like pivot her her like her hip. And yeah. it I'm not complaining. I right. was like, it, it's too sexy. It's it's not coming out as I'm pulling a fucking mm -hmm. uh, a gun and standing and then putting your you know your 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 right foot back for the pressure of the muscle. So it looks too sexy, and and, and I just yeah. didn't know how to say it. So I was like, "It's oh yeah." She's like, "Well, that's what my body looks like," <laughs> and I was like, "Oh dang!" <laughs> and then seeing the finished product before you see the show, I was like, "Well, then awesome," because like you know, because she comes off in the movie as a real badass. I love her character. She yeah. is like nonsense, fucking serial killer, dude. Right. <laughs> She's not. I had, a, I had a question for you. Um, yeah. you, you talked about uh, you know, in, English being your second language and, and spending so much time in Mexico. 
Uh, daytime television had so many iconic characters down there, like El Chapolin, Colorado, or just like really even telenovelas on TV. Uh, have you felt that any of those like characters or shows have had any influence at all on your writing or even yeah. filmmaking now? Oh, yeah, dude. Um, I think they're okay. This is so fucking, this is a great question. You're the first one who's ever asked me this, ever. And I understand the how other people see it and like make fun of the cheesiness and the and the push-ins and the colors and and that is and it's you know like uh familia de peluche it's it's on purpose they understand yeah. it. and it's like it's like making fun of yourself like to me i feel that one of the best i don't know i love dumb smart comedy mm -hmm. i love it it is not easy to make someone seem dumb and funny but good, believable. I don't think it's it's not. I don't think it's easy. Like yeah. Dumb and Dumber. I fucking tell me somebody else who can make that movie. Right. right. I, <laughs> like uh, like when Chris Pratt's in like uh, uh, Parks and Rec. Exactly. <laughs> fucking charming as hell. Uh, <laughs> he seems like he's got a heart. You sympathize for him. You see what he's trying to get at. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. White. Come on. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's fucking amazing. Right. Um, but uh, I mean, I used to watch El Calabozo. El Calabozo was one of my favorite uh, TV shows in Mexico, which is a uh, it was like a teenager, like a younger adult. Like I remember, I think the uh, the hosts were like 23, 24. So I would see that when I was 15. And it was a a talk show that was in like a in a warehouse. And their table was like a metal bucket with graffiti and they had a couch and they had their friends over. It was the, it was the best. <laughs> that kid was like something that really inspired me for work and the sharp talking and the, and the con constant cussing, but saying fuck five different ways means something different every single way. Oh, wow. Interesting. From the little that I've seen, you have like you have a really good comedic timing, and uh, that yeah. in whenever you're speaking Spanish, there's a certain flow to a uh, Spanish than, than there is to English, and that is even more so whenever you're telling a joke, especially because there's ways of saying something in Spanish that doesn't have any real translation in English. So as you're writing a story or thinking of these ideas. I know that uh, at least for my significant other, she says that often she can think in Spanish. So like you're thinking of these ideas, but do you ever find yourself in a corner where it doesn't translate anymore? All the time. Yeah. All the time. I always think in Spanish first. Yeah. And, and then I talk in English. Weird, and, then, and then when I go, to, when I go to Mexico, I can continue to, yeah, blah, 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 blah. But then out of nowhere, I'm just like, how do you say this? Right. And it's fucking frustrating because then all my family is like, oh, you're too Americanized now, bro. <laughs> making fun of me and shit. It's like, no. It's just Do you ever find that like being like a real a real problem if you had it as a certain plot point or like a, uh, a piece of dialogue that's going to be so important. But then like once you start to hit it, you're like, oh, shit, uh, that doesn't seem like it would work as well in English. Or do you just kind of roll with it and, and figure out how to make it? No, I, I feel like I try to like there were that, that's a great question again because I um I think during this movie, I think during the shooting of Monday, there were a couple of times where I would uh they would tell me like, hey, this word is not it's not landing. So I would yeah. say I, I wanna do the joke is da 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 and then they would be like, Oh, okay, cool, switch that word to this, cool. Oh wow. Yeah. There has to be a precise thing. That I'm just like, you're not changing it. Like in the mm -hmm. onion bugs, there's a thing that I thought was not going to be translated because it's two people. It's a person showing what a relationship, uh, two relationships with just holding hands. You know what I mean? So it's like, she, he's like, well, what what happened to us? Like, well, with you, it was like this. With, with him, it's like this. And that should say everything. But I'm like, I don't know if it's, if it's going to translate to English, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so I would have to ask the actor and the actress like, Hey, does this make sense? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I think it'll play. Cause I also don't want them to be like, they look stupid. <laughs> when does that movie come out? Dude, it, the, the fucking movie was going to screen in Austin. We were going to screen here in Albuquerque, but fucking Corona, man. Yeah. I, 
And you know, ironic because it's about the Y two K virus, right? Oh. Right. <laughs> I just remember, like, yeah, because I made I made uh, mixtapes for you. Did you ever end up using those? Of course I did, dude. Yeah. I have one in my office still. Nice. I send it to the actors. Actually, yeah. Mixtapes that you sent me, I sent two to um to Katie and then two to Michael, and I I kept one, and then I have one for my friend John. When I say mixtapes, I mean cassette tapes. I made him. Three cassette tapes with uh, he he gave me the songs, and I downloaded them, and then I actually lit- put them on a mixtape like you would make for your girlfriend back in the nineties. Yeah, and- dude, uh, literally tapes because I wanted the actors. Since the movie's based in nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. I wanted the actors to get like tapes and be like, figure the fuck out how you're gonna play this. But these are the songs that describe your characters. Right. <laughs> and they would they went and they would hear it, and I think uh, Katie would have bought a Walkman like I. A cheap Sony Walkman and put the fucking thing on, and she would like yeah. work on her stuff I, with, with the soundtrack. I had to borrow that. I had it was a dual cassette deck, and uh, I borrowed it from somebody. <laughs> and they were like, "What do you need this for?" And then yeah. the hardest part was finding cassette tapes. Oh, was, oh yeah, I can imagine. Uh, but they sell them at um, uh, Office Office Max or Office Depot or whatever you want to call them. Oh Office yeah. Right yeah. Oh, that makes sense. No, so I that? got like a, a five pack of Max Cells, <laughs> yeah. like you would back in the day, you know. Um, Someone so, just offered me today if I needed any blank CDs, and I'm like, nah, yeah. what for? Off, yeah. Well, um, so your movie, so Monday, we I saw it up at the Santa Fe Film Festival, and uh, you you were like, hey, uh, I'll give you a you know a screen you know a ticket if you come up. I'm like, sure, I'll come up. So I drive up there. And there was a, a movie before yours, and it was like a short film. It was like 10 minutes, I think. Oh, yeah. The one about the family and shit. <laughs> yeah. So the, the fucked up thing is, is the TV, the TV, TV mentions what I think he's going to mention. So this woman gets up and she's like, uh, This is my movie. And it took me like two years to make it because I didn't have $7,000 like Alejandro had. I didn't have any Robert Rodriguez money, so it took me two years to make it. I hope you guys enjoy. And then just like goes and sits down, and I was like, Did you really "Say that shit." Yeah, I was like, "What oh the? Oh my fuck? god!" No, I I thought you were gonna bring up the case that she was Martin Scorsese's daughter. I did not know that. No, I she didn't. Was Martin Scorsese's daughter. Oh, huh? What? I didn't yeah, know that. Not fucking... Martin Scorsese's daughter from another marriage. She's like forty one. Oh. And she was there. That was her. That was her movie. Oh no, shit! She was she was salty though. She was pretty salty about it. You had like three hundred thousand dollars. I had seven k. I don't think so. If she had three hundred thousand dollars, she spent all that on kegs and shit. I don't know. No. <laughs> I'm not saying the movie was bad. It just you know, it, I like. I enjoyed it. It just was not you know. It it, it was a great first film to put before yours because yours was just like. Rolling action, com action comedy is what yours is. Yeah, it's a great film. Thank you. Uh, and and it's funny because like when it first started, I was like, okay, this is a, you know low budget film. And then by the end of it, I was like, fuck, man, how did he film this for seven thousand dollars? Because it just doesn't seem, you know, first of all, I don't think he paid the actors anything. You know, like it's like you couldn't have. There was lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Really? El Ray paid uh, lunch didn't come out of our pocket. They paid oh. up to, they paid up to I think four or five meals. I don't oh, remember. My friend Kevin was with us. He he oh. he he remembers the girl getting up there and being all salty. Kevin <laughs> Lopez, please. Did she actually say that shit? Yeah. Watch. Ask Kevin. He'll see if he answers it. Yeah, she was just like, uh, "This is my movie, and it took me two years to make. I didn't have seven thousand dollars like Alejandro." And you just get up there and you're like, hey, man, it was really uh, enjoyable to make. You're like, I would never in a million years do a TV show like that ever again because it was the worst. But uh, but it was great at the end and enjoy my movie. And then you like got sat down. You didn't like say anything else. But she was like a little salty. See if see if Kevin responds. But yeah, I just thought I was just like, holy crap. Why did she say all that? I don't know. Why are you being such a bitch? <laughs> I did not know that was that <laughs> I think I got there. I said something and then I left outside. I get really nervous before my screening. Yeah. So I always go in. Hey, by the way. Hey, thanks, Lane. Yeah. That's cool. It's a fun one. Yeah. That was a fun one. But no, nah, it, was, it was fun. 
it's like you said, I don't think I'll ever do it again. It was just, I, I can't do it again. First of yeah. all, I'm she incredibly goes. out of shape. It's ridiculous. Boom, he just answered. She did. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> Always gotta love how salty people can be, right? Martin Scorsese, you better keep your your daughter on a leash. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> You're here first, guys. Real beef. Just kidding. I heard it here. Uh, Real beef. Uh, you wanna, uh, can you stick around with this for the second hour? Because I have tons more stuff to ask. Oh yeah, man. I, okay. I well, I just put another beer in the fridge, and I don't see any of you getting a refill. I've been, hey, I've been drinking the whole time. I'm still nursing this. Hey, for an hour? What's that? Nursing for an hour? I have not. I'm on three. <laughs> At a boy. <laughs> Holly, what's going on? Uh, well, I'm gonna get a beer on the break because I've been drinking water. <laughs> water? I'm trying to lose weight, and it's hey. it's hard on quarantine. Are you drinking water or water? <laughs> no, wa like real water. <laughs> oh, okay. I wish it was not, water. Not, not New Mexico film water. No, no. Uh, so right now, if you go to Alejandro's, if you just go type in perps on uh, YouTube, you can watch the newest film uh, by Alejandro. And it has a surprise cameo that we'll tease and talk about in the second hour in the film. Yes, we will. Um, which I have a lot of questions about because that was pretty. Oh, dude, cool. I'll, I'll, dude, I'll tell you whatever you want. Yeah. The guy. I is... wasn't expecting that. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't I expecting that tweet. I watched it so, uh, this afternoon. I was all some yeah, actor, huh? I... <laughs> all right. Yeah, so, I wasn't expecting it either. Yeah. Do you want to sure. do you want to promote like here? You could probably promote it better than I can, Alejandro. Oh. Um... Exactly. <laughs> Did you see what Aaron just texted? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Aaron. I, I agree, man. But no, I um uh she wasn't mean or anything. I didn't know about that, so now I, I just feel like, oh fuck her. Yeah. I didn't know she said that. But um wait, what was your question? Uh go ahead and promote like because we're at the end of the hour. We usually promote all our stuff. Go ahead and promote what you want to. Check out perps on YouTube or check out Monday on iTunes and Possibly it might be available tomorrow at 420 on Amazon. Ooh, kick ass. For free. Really? Ooh. You don't want any money. Free. Just enjoy it and have a good time. It's 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 an awesome film. I'll check I, it out. I really enjoy it. I still haven't watched the other ones and I would like to. Maybe I'll do that uh later. Check the them out. I know what you think. With our crew, yeah. Yeah. Millennium Bugs, it's still not out just because we're trying to find a home. We're already in talks with a couple of uh platforms and and hopefully they'd be interested because what's really sad is people don't want to pay attention to a movie if they don't have fucking tom cruise in it right and it's and it's you know you ask your question it's like well how are we going to discover the next fucking yeah. michael shannon the next reese withers <laughs> just tell people Ever. Um, i'm not saying tom cruise isn't in the film you might want to watch <laughs> He might pop up, but pop it thunder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I should, I, dude. Has anyone done that as a tactic, like a distro tactic or a marketing tactic, where you put the name of someone like Tom Cruise and then a question mark at the end? Tom <laughs> yeah, right. Could you yeah. just show the back of somebody's head? You're like Tom Cruise question mark <laughs> because you're not lying. <laughs> it's like, it? I don't know. And then you have a guy, and his name's Tom Cruise. C U R Z. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> There was a really good, um, there was a really good marketing uh, campaign in Mexico about I want to say it was a movie it was promoting a movie theater mm -hmm. a movie theater and a grocery store no it was a grocery store that put a stand in a movie theater so they would put camarón mm -hmm. like they would say camarón which is shrimp in Spanish uh, camarón Diaz and they would they did a whole humongous mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was great dude like because i was like reading it and it took me a good five six seconds to be like oh shit i get it okay cool <laughs> nice, because nice. it looked really pro <clears throat> i don't even know why we're talking about that <laughs> That's so uh james do you have anything to promote i'm drunk That's okay. uh just uh if you're in a streaming mood and want to play like a where's waldo with me 
Uh, you can check me out on uh, in the background on Daybreak, uh, The Brave, or uh, I actually have a role in the second season of Midnight Texas. That's not oh, really yeah, 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 yeah. You do. Yeah. What's that? You do? No, I saw your um, your still. I'm like, where, that's where I remember you yeah. from season two. Uh, I was in the first season, but I was in like every episode of the second season. So fucking a, that's awesome. It was, it was my actual acting job, not just background. So. <laughs> cool, man. Uh, Ray, you got anything? Uh, I've still been doing art commissions through this. Uh, I mean, I've also been working pretty regular hours at the office, but in my downtime, I've been trying to do more art. So you can follow my art stuff at uh, at Basuda Paint or Basuda Paint on Facebook. You can also follow me. Uh, and I post old wrestling stuff and things in my normal life on my uh, regular Instagram at Ray Basuda. And uh, also you can find me, Ray Basuda, just about any platform you want and i mean i'm on venmo you want to send me money that's cool too whatever <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, alejandro maybe you want to film like it'll be like barton fink you can make a movie with ray it's a wrestling picture yeah, exactly. yeah. I love barton. <laughs> it's a wrestling picture holly you. you got anything to promote uh yes you can follow me on instagram at hollybird comedy uh i'm also on venmo as that and uh <laughs> yeah if you want to send me money please please for the love of god do um and send it to holly yes um if their unemployment checks yet? i don't get unemployment so yeah yeah you, welcome you, to the you, gig you, industry you, yeah no unemployment for us uh we do a show here uh, live on oh, sunday wait. oh go ahead sorry uh, yes. Sorry, and then I also have uh, my my own podcast with my oh, yeah. boyfriend that is getting increasingly uh, ridiculous. So. Nice. nice, cool. What's it called? Where can we catch that at? Oh, <laughs> bad advice saves the world. There you go. Uh, and then uh, we do a, a live show here Sunday nights from six to eight p.m. Um, like like our uh, Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash ten drink. I pop in randomly during the week in. Uh, you know, answer questions and, you know, just drink with people. Cause I guess people like it. It's weird. I never thought if I like turn the stream on and then just talk to people in the chat, they would like it. And I get people that write me and they're like, I really enjoy like, th thank you for doing that because you know, I'm super bored and da, 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 da. it's pretty interesting. So go to facebook.com forward slash Tendrick, like it, uh, like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Our website's tendrickminimum.com. Um, and like most people during, uh, this, uh, uh, pandemic, uh, we definitely drink. You should as well. Always remember though, never get too drunk to jerk 10 drink minimum.
You took the earth in my mind Until the end of
left me yet I'm the same man I was in the age of 13 and I've lived my life with no regrets if you're looking for some freedom all it takes is 10 drinks minimum if you're looking for rhyme or reason Oh, hello, and welcome back to Ten Drink Minimum. It is now the wavy hour. I shouldn't need to tell you guys that. Let me bring everybody back in. Unmute the microphones here. Hello. We have fired Holly. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I accidentally closed the window. It was my fault. <laughs> oh. So yeah, so we're back, and uh, we have uh, Alejandro Montoya Moran from. Uh, he's a writer director. He stayed around with us for the Wavy Hour. So uh, he has a new uh, short film on YouTube. It's called Perps, and you just search for it, and you'll find it. It's amazing. It's about ten minutes long. Is that correct? Nine minutes, to be precise. Yeah, I, I assume you know because like I've edited things before, and after a while, you're just like, I fucking hate this. <laughs> yeah. I hate this movie. I hate this thing. Remember when you hated Royal's voice after my roast, Chris? I I I was editing, and you know, start over and over, and you hear the same like line or whatever over and over and over again. (laughs) Oh, he's like, we could have done home. That was like the first. (laughs) That's what he said. So you know exactly how long it is. So in in the movie, in the short film, there's a surprise cameo that kind of. I, I was going to ask you if we could talk about it, but I assume we can now because I've seen him all over social media promoting the film. Yeah. Uh, in the film, you have uh, Lou Ferrigno. Yeah, yeah. Really cool guy. Yeah. How did, how did you get Lou Ferrigno? Um, well, the, the traditional way, dude. Like, we fucking... Well, and by the traditional ways, it's nothing clever. We just did it really by the book. Like, we were... Yeah. Hey man, you're fucking Lou Ferrigno. You've been the fucking Hulk. You've been in yeah. Uh, what Marvel movie was he in? Iron the Man. Hulk. The Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, he was in that one. And then <laughs> yeah. I love you, man. Not only but oh yeah, in one of the biggest fucking names in like fitness for forty years. Yeah. You know. So, so I got to I got to t- I got to watch uh, him and uh, Sam Jones do a a panel at comic-con in february or january and uh you know sam jones was uh flash gordon which i watched i you used to have a a show on youtube the b movie couch and i took gordon over there and you guys hated it 
Oh, dude. It was, <laughs> yeah, I remember that, dude. <laughs> and so and so Lou Ferrigno and uh, Sam Jones, they kind of do the comic book circuit together now. Yeah. And uh, he has taught Sam Jones how to do a workout. And when Lou Ferrigno goes in to do a workout, like not at his home, like at a gym, he takes 35 minutes uh, or 36 minutes to do a workout and he's done. And how wow. the workout, how it starts is he goes right up to the, the manager. Or he goes right up to the desk and he goes, I want to talk to the manager. And they bring the manager out and he goes, he'll say, me and Sam are going to do a workout. It's going to take us 36 minutes. We want no one to bother us, no one to take pictures, no one to come and ask us questions. We're going to do 36 minutes, and then afterwards, we'll take all the pictures you want. We'll, we'll, we'll answer all the questions you want. Boom, boom. Let me this. Yeah. Straight up. And Sam was saying, like, in between, like, stations, uh, his, his cool down in between stations from moving to the next is, like, five seconds. <laughs> it's, like, just... It's, like, damn. I mean, he was kind of like... What was he like, Mr. Olympia or Mr. Universe or something? He was, I think, sec Mr. Universe. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was both, dude, because he was like, <laughs> oh, no, for real, like he was like Arnold Schwarzenegger's like competition. Yeah, wow, like, he was the one that Arnold Schwarzenegger had to beat. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, uh, I wish my workouts were only thirty six minutes. Yeah. It takes me so long. <laughs> Yeah, that. but Lou Ferrigno's like curling like young cattle. Like, right. I think that's that yeah. makes the difference is the, uh, the amount of weight he lifts. Bro, he is 69. Wow. He is. Wow. He was fantastic. He, he's fucking ripped. He was Mr. Universe twice, at least, because it says first overall winner, Mr. 1973, 1974. That second. Mr. Universe. Yep. Uh, da, da, da. Mr. Olympia 12th. Mr. Olympia 2nd. So, yeah. It's wow. just all over that shit. Huge yeah, guy. Yeah, either 1st or 2nd. And, like, yeah. so that's pretty impressive. So, no? I mean, did you have to go through his agent or did you just, yeah. like, you know? Yeah, I mean, with, uh, Presley Talent, which is a local talent agency. Yeah. We, um, we, we, we contacted them and he was going to be here for the Comic Con. Right. So, oh, we're like, hey, do you think that uh, Lou would be interested in in doing a small short film just for like two, three hours, like it's super small, like in and out? Yeah. And they were they were really cool, and they were really ah, oh, motherfucker, look at this. Did you? I mean, did you have to get a lot of funding? Uh, a lot of funding for this movie? No, we did not. We did not have a lot of money for it. We had. Uh, I mean, obviously, Lou worked with us because. The man, like, again, what I'm trying to say is that he's 70, and the guy was flying in uh, from L.A., then did a bunch of TV uh, appearances, then he got the key from the city, from the mayor, <laughs> then appeared at Comic-Con, then went to our set to shoot uh -huh. while he was snowing, and went home or went to his hotel or Airbnb by, like, wow. midnight. Like, dude. Wow. And probably had a blast in doing it. At 70. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, we were trying. To, we 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 were like, he was really cool. He read the script. A couple of days later, he's like, yeah, he'll do it. Yeah. Uh, but he, you know, two hours. This is uh, two or three hours because he he's flying all day doing this and doing that. So did you almost crap yourself whenever they said he would do it? The what? Did you almost crap yourself whenever he said yes. Oh yeah, totally, dude. Like we were. Let me move that dog. <laughs> like we were, we 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 were like, super excited because it's the way this movie came around was. We had a camera, and we said, "Hey, nobody's doing anything this weekend. I, I, let me write something." So I wrote something in, in a day or two, send yeah. it out to to John and Tomas, and they're like, "This is hilarious," because I, to me, I wanted to see Tomas, an ex cop, be a stoner. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, which is funny. And then it just it just blew out of proportion. Like, we're like, oh fuck it, then let's let's destroy shit. Oh, let's get Lou Ferrigno. You know, like, why would that happen? But we did. Yeah, I'm putting a link in the chat for the for the movie. Yeah, so people, I would oh, shit yeah. a chicken if Lou Ferrigno would do one of my movies. Oh, dude, it was he was super nice. Yeah. He was super nice. He he uh he wanted to improvise. Like that was really cool. That he he didn't want to step over the line. So yeah. he, little, oh, that's awesome. 
yeah, he was really professional, and I super appreciate him because he was shy about asking, like, hey, is it okay if I do this? And I'm like, Mr. Ferrigno, fucking, that's funny. <laughs> like, and I saw one of the social media posts, and he called you a director. So, yeah. yeah that's no, that's super cool. nice guy, man. Super nice yeah. guy. The guy was improving shit, but uh, it was uh, like there was one really funny line where he turns around, he goes, Shut up, bitches. He says something like to everyone. <laughs> Every, bitches, shut up, or something like that. Yeah. And we're like, we can't put that. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, it doesn't make sense. Right, no. He was just improvising, but, you know, he had the, he felt like, like, you know, even if it's two hours, he wasn't just there doing a job. Like, you know, we were like, whatever, Mr. Brigno, you know, what do you think? We come this way, you come that way. He's like, well, I can pick up. Like, he started, like, adding his two cents. If I punch him this way, okay, so let's move the camera this way. You can hit him that way. Cool. <laughs> yeah, he was great. He was super nice. Yeah. That's and, awesome. And your, your friend Kenny's in it, right? That, that's him? Kenny. Kenny's the yeah. cop, and to me is the cat who steals the show. Yeah, so, that's pretty awesome. He is fun. Well, he's got that pillow. I love that scene. That yeah. pillow. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> we had. Oh, yeah. oh, man, that was so much fun. You know, the whole thing of Kenny or the cop hitting it and he can't break it, but everyone can break it. Yeah. We came up with it that day. We were there. We're like, you know, it would be really funny, Kenny. So we can push your character even more to the ground. And he <laughs> started laughing his ass off. And we had some more shit, but it was, it gets too long. But it's so That's much it's so much fun. It's fantastic. And so you guys were going to shop that around to like different film festivals, correct? Yeah. Honestly, the, the point of this short film was just um, let's send it to a couple of film festivals and just have fun. We were just having fun. Like yeah. this stupid comedy. Yeah. And we submitted to a bunch of film festivals, but because of all this that's going around, we said, mm-hmm. well, you know what, shit, we have a comedy sitting in our, in our fucking laptop. Let's just upload it and, and promote it and hopefully people watch it. Yeah. Um, so after Rebel with the Crew, I mean, you, you like they they have an epilogue where they kind of talk about how you took the movie Monday around all the film festivals, and you know it was pretty much a hit everywhere it went. So I mean, did you get a lot of traction off of that at all? Did I get what? Sorry, any traction off of that movie? No, yeah, I feel like you know, there's always that. Um, I guess call it entitled, but you know, you're, you know, like I was like, Oh man, I got to work with Robert. It's going to open even more doors, but it's like, it, there's so many stages and it's very fucking humbling because it makes you yeah. really step back and kind of analyze where you're at and deflate you because every fucking problem. And I see that Ray's really like intrigued about this. Every fucking problem, Ray, Chris, mm-hmm. Holly, Smiley, that can happen with this fucking movie happened. Yeah. With Millennium Bugs. Every fucking thing. I went to the hospital. Dude. <laughs> I had to tattoo the name of the movie because I was fucking, I, I'd never, I never knew about anxiety. Yeah. And it was so fucking like I had my day job and I had to fucking raise money for this. And so the whole, like, the, I'm incredibly proud of them. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm just incredibly yeah. proud. Without Monday, it wouldn't have let me get financing for Millennium Books. So was it going to open the doors that I would have loved? No, it didn't. But it opened the doors to make another film that I'm incredibly happy for. And I got to meet my idol, dude. You know, like I got to meet Robert Rodriguez. Like that was the fucking shit. Right. Well, you crowdfunded um, Millennium Books. Yeah. I've I've watched your social media. You you had uh, you went to the hospital more than once on that, right? I, well, I went to the hospital three times because I, mm-hmm. I I didn't know what was happening. Like I didn't know what the fuck it was. Like I was like, wait, what's happening? Oh, I'm I'm really stressed, or oh, am I smoking really shitty weed, or oh, <laughs> <laughs> like there was just so much shit that 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 was happening, and I didn't know what it was, and it was just like, hey, you need to you need to chill. Yeah. And so now you actually host, I mean, you, you were, I don't know if you still are, you like kind of try to people now how to crowd. Yeah. I, movies I've done, a, I did a class about crowdfunding because I, I think people not only need to know what it really takes to crowdfund, yeah. but it like, if anyone's like, Hey, well, why should you charge? I'm like, well, because I, I have a bill at the hospital that I need to pay. 
You know, like I'm not doing it for free because it fucking cost me a bunch. And it's a lot of work. And it's a lot. Well, not only that, but I, I think, you know, comedians, we do this to ourselves a lot where we'll do stuff for free all the time. I do it all the time. Um, and the thing is, you get tired of it. it. It's a craft. It's a job. It's a passion. But that, you know, just because it's fun doesn't mean you're not worth money, you know. Exactly. And it's, and it's, Hey man, we're trying to provide something. Not only do I want, I mean, like, look, man, a movie is a product and people need to make money and eat out of that product. It's like, mm. they need to understand that acting is not just like, I just show up and no, 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 man. It's, it's having a job to afford taking time off to make passion projects. So actors have to have two fucking jobs. Well, and the thing too is, it's like everybody's self, right? You have to, have a job. I don't know if you if, if you do, but you have to have a job to then finance your dream. Maybe you did make it and you're full full time living on your dream. That's fucking fantastic, and I appreciate that. Yeah, and I love it. I don't. Yeah. Right. You well, know? and then like during the pandemic, you know, everybody's like at home and working, doing. Well, they're streaming Netflix, streaming they're streaming Amazon Prime. Well, someone made those movies. Someone put their yeah. life into it, and I I don't remember who they were. They complained that that movie, like Trolls World Tour or whatever, they're like, really? $20 Trolls World Tour. My quest to see it, but I got to pay $20 for it. And someone literally like gut checked them. And they were like, look, that was supposed to go to the theaters. There's yeah. a lot yeah. of people that worked on that film. There's a lot of people who put a lot of money into that film. And, it, and, and they would like to make that money at least back. And yeah. you're complaining that it's $20 and you get to own it. Yeah, exactly. Dude. Yeah. Look, this and is- plus me, it, and trust me, if you have children like I do, who's four and loves trolls, your kids yeah. are going to watch that movie a thousand times. Right. It's worth the 20 bucks. Right. I'm tired of watching Frozen, so I'll watch it. <laughs> you got to have media, man. You got to fucking support, yeah. support fucking artists. Like it's, it's ridiculous. I, what movie did I just buy? It was a Blu-ray or something. Oh, I just I just pirate everything myself. Fuck. Oh, great, Chris. Great. <laughs> I bought the digital version of uh, Uncut Gems and, and the DVD because okay. those directors are old. They're fucking, they're indie. That yeah. have oh, yeah. ladder and doing a really good job, and they're fucking really talented. That movie gave me so much anxiety. <laughs> so good. Uh, can, we, can we show the trailer to a Millennium Bugs? Yeah. Fuck it. Why All not? Right. This is uh so this has it. You guys are trying to you know figure out where to where to put it, what platform. But you guys, uh, you crowdfunded this movie. How much did it cost? I can't say because we're oh, trying okay. to sell it. Oh, I got you. Oh yeah, but uh, you crowdfunded the money, and it's like with talent. It's filmed here in Albuquerque, correct? Yes, sir. In Albuquerque and in Austin. Oh, really? I didn't know Austin, but yes, and sir. it takes place right there at the at the. So let's see. Oh, there we go. Make it a buster night. Would you have any great coupons? Why 2K experts? I did not have. Let's wait, check this out. Could you put that on a closer? What? Could you put that on a closer? Uh, Fried chicken after this. Yeah, yeah, this one's good. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Three, two, one. Happy two thousand. Nice. That was cool. Yeah, man, I'm really excited. Thank you. I'm excited about this movie. The fucking actors killed it. I actually that remember exactly, exactly where I was uh, for New Year's Eve 1999. I do, too. Yeah. I was at, let's go through it. Where were you guys? Uh, I was at a party uh, out in the country, uh, and we were staying. Like, we had a party just there. We were outside of the city. If anything crazy happened, we were all together. 
and who knew, you know, cause no, you didn't know what was going to happen, you know? So mm-hmm. that's what we did. We just partied all night. I was nine. So <laughs> I don't remember it very well. No, it's right. Yeah. <gasps> uh, I was, I, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Smiley. Uh, I, I remember, I remember, uh, I made a big point about it. It was going to be the future and I needed to dress like it. So I had a, I had a complete, like I was dressed completely in silver vinyl. Oh, wow. And uh, that's the one and only time that I dyed my hair or bleached it to a platinum silver blonde. Don't do that. If you have black hair, by the way, oh, no. yeah. uh, but yeah, I was just completely silver, silver vinyl jacket, like silver vinyl pants, silver, like rave shoes and a silver uh, button up. And uh, I, I, I just paraded around the Albuquerque downtown scene. It was a lot of fun. That futuristic look is still not caught on yet. You know, I, I keep Ooh. waiting for it to pop up. It just hasn't, hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Vinyl Holly lasts Marie. forever. We'll have that suit. Where was- uh, I was, so I was, I think 10. Um, yeah. And I remember that uh, my dad, so my dad's always been a computer guy. And he was like, these people are being such idiots. Um, And my little best friend wanted to spend the night and her parents wouldn't let them come over. And uh, my dad just thought her parents were idiots. And uh, he wasn't so scared that the world was going to end, but he was afraid of how people were going to react. So he just made us stay home. (laughs) What's that? What's that? Alex, that's what leads to the world ending. How people, mm-hmm. react. yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so yeah, we just watched stupid movies and made fun of them, and then my dad just made a lot of fun of everybody. So it was fun. <laughs> I made it easy. If you just saw some random person walking down the street in in a silver vinyl suit, pretty easy. To make fun <laughs> yeah. <of that. laughs> It's Albuquerque, though. You see that shit all the time. You're like, eh, whatever. Every day. Everywhere. <laughs> hey, Alejandro, where were you? Sorry? Where were you during the millennium? Where were you at during the millennium? Oh, I was in Mexico. I was in Monterrey. Monterrey, Mexico. I was what at, were you uh, doing, though? Oh, I was partying. I was 18. Oh. <laughs> I turned 18, oh. so uh, I was partying. It's uh, 18 is the legal age to drink in Mexico, so I was drinking. That's crazy. Because my birthday was December 30th. How hard was it to get like I, w- I was partying? <laughs> oh nice. So how hard was it to get uh like the iMac, some of the old equipment to kind of put this in that era? Honestly, dude, it was it, it, some stuff. The Mac, it came pretty easy because I got three of them. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, there were some people that actually had a couple of them, but <laughs> Um, cars was the hardest. Cars? Yeah, cars was the hardest because um, we got a, all the cars that you see in the background is are the, from the nineties. But Jesus Christ, it was tough to get those. I bet that was hard Actually, to get. Yeah. Looked polished and, and newer, and you know, taken care of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you don't want like all ninety four Tercel that's like you know the paint's <laughs> all rotted off of it, and you're like fuck. Exactly. So and no, cars were the was the hardest. Not even wardrobe because I feel like a lot of the styles. Excuse me, I'm burping. I've had three beers. The uh, the the wardrobe. A lot of the wardrobe that's coming on right now to be trendy is very '90s influenced. It is. A lot of my old clothes are working just fine. Yeah, like. Who would have thought that those high-waisted jeans that everyone oh. had at least a decade of shit were going to oh. be that trendy? Yeah. Not only high-waisted, but now acid wash is coming back, and I'm yeah. really fighting against that because I hate it. It's or hideous. The, I the had whole- one acid one with like high-top Reeboks when I was 10. <laughs> or the, the holes in the jeans. That's a big fucking thing again. No, I'm oh not- yeah, I don't mind that. That's comfortable. But velvet for girls? Oh my god, why are we bringing velvet back? It's uncomfortable. It's hot. It feels weird. It is hot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> hot. 
Wait, is it? Are you saying it's hot like it's fucking hot, or it's like it's fucking? Hot? <laughs> no, it's fucking hot. And my mom <laughs> used to dress me in velvet for like every photo or special occasion, so it just brings back traumatic memories for me. Ooh. I like it. Oh shit! Yeah, I don't want to feel like a teddy bear everywhere I go. That's not fun. Hey, when people start wearing cross colors again, then we'll talk now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wait till Crocs make their comeback. It's going to be like Champion, where whenever you had Champion, whenever I was a kid, is because you're poor. Now, if you're wearing Champion, oh. like that's oh, like yeah. flex. I was like, well, Crocs in like 30 years, you're going to come back and people are going to be rocking those. Like, oh my God, I paid $100 for these Crocs. Let's oh, be God. real, Ray. Crocs were never in they can't really come back well that's like the thing is like they were a thing and then the nostalgia will bring them back years later and you're like why is this here why are they okay. back i'm gonna yeah. defend ray on this i back in the day the fanny pack wasn't ever really in and those fucking things are back now and, and people the fanny packs are great and it's like gimmick bags chris right. gimmick bags. gimmick bag hamster has a quote-unquote gimmick bag yeah <laughs> And I told him the only way I let him use it is if I can't bring my purse and pile all my shit into his stupid Manny pack like he does my purse. Are so you saying and that kidney? has <laughs> what are you what are you guys saying? Kidney or what Fan gimmick hat. bag? G- gimmick? Yeah. They're the is that the little backpacks? The little fucking backpacks? No, it's just it's just a no. better word for a fanny pack. That's all. Oh, okay. <laughs> fanny bag, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Hip, hip bag. I don't know who. So they're not. I hip. don't like them personally. Right. I, I hate them. <laughs> I'm like, oh. in the wrestling industry, everybody's rocking gimmick well, bag. So we're Zubats. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some something recently, and it was a, a a new wrestler. Oh, it was on AEW. They showed like one of the new wrestlers, and he was at home, and he had Zubas on. And I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh my god, those are still around." I'm sad that I never I never splurged and bought myself a pair, but they're definitely a popular thing. Yeah, those will come back around. We'll see. Yeah. Oh god. So Alex, during the break, I was having a conversation with my girlfriend. And uh, this may hopefully doesn't bring the conversation down too much, but we are talking about this. Uh, she comes from a Mexican household and she's talking about what she was calling Mexican guilt. And <laughs> I realized that like uh, that uh, children of immigrants uh, or it, people who have immigrated over, they have a certain uh, expectation of their children. They're very supportive and they want them to succeed in anything that they do. Yeah. But whenever it's something that is either creating or if it doesn't immediately right, make right. money, they're That's like, oh, like I'm great. That you're, like it's great that you're doing that, but like right. what are you really gonna do? Did you Ray? Yeah. Cherie, are you hearing this? Cherie's my girlfriend. The reason okay. why I'm asking this is because this is what you just asked is what Millennium Bugs is about. Okay. <laughs> That's, That's funny. I just want her to see that because sometimes I feel like I don't know, man. It feels fucking cool when you make something that speaks to someone, and it was very, it was very tough to convince my family and friends that I wanted to be a filmmaker. Like everyone would just like shut the fuck up, dude. And you have no like I had fights with my dad in front of people and in Christmas because my dad would get drunk and then he would be like, and then there's my son. The one that wants to be an artist. And it just like, oh, you fucker. <laughs> like, but I get it. I get why they're saying that. But there's well, the whole Millennium Bucks is about two best friends. And it's basically them need, needing to result what they're going through in their lives before uh Y2K, before the, the, mm-hmm. the, the new millennium. And uh Kelly is going through a accepting that her parents died and that she has no more money in her inheritance that she's helped to kind of drink her problems away because it's a fucking hard thing. You know, you lose both Mm -hmm. of your parents. It's like, Jesus Christ. At, I think she's 20, like at 21, 20, that's not easy. And Miguel is like the complete opposite. It's, it's, it's about a guy 
uh, I based it very fairly on uh, very evidently on myself being a first generation American mm -hmm. who I was supposed to take over my dad's like business, which is an import expert that he has in Laredo. And then I around 14, 15, after I did a Vietnam movie, which we talked about, I was like, mm -hmm. I'm a study film. And it was, it was horrible because, you know, like he, my dad didn't do it to piss me off. It's just, it's where he was from. It's exactly, you know, yeah. like, no, a man has to go and do a job that he has to go study two degrees. So then he's shut the fuck up, Aaron. Aaron must have <laughs> 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 That's funny. But you I mean, I even have that with my dad a little bit. Um, probably not to the same extent, but, uh, I was a real estate agent and when I got divorced, I tried comedy and then decided that's what I wanted to do and went on the road with Kurt Fletcher, like six months into comedy. And my parents were like, she has lost her goddamn mind. Yeah. Uh, we need to commit her. Like, what is wrong with you? I'm an only, I went to Catholic school. Like they wanted me to go to like you know, Ivy League colleges and stuff. And I was like, no, I don't think so. I think I'm going to be creative. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just, hard. Maybe it's it's like explaining to people that are younger that maybe the way they feel when they're closing a deal or they're, um, you know, maybe stitching up a body or, you know, signing a contract with a judge, whatever the fuck. That's how we yeah. feel when we deliver a joke and you get everyone in the room to laugh their asses off or you get a painting that gets blasted in the wall. Yeah. 10 minutes later, someone's buying it. Well, um, I, I would get that. Like I started this like 13, almost 14 years ago and my parents are supportive, but then I would be like, Hey man, you know, we're, we're doing our show. I would like every milestone I would hit. Like I'd be like, Oh man, we're doing our show live every Sunday in a bar. And my dad would be like, awesome. How much are they paying you? It was always mm -hmm. like, how yeah, much money are you making off of this? Of course. And it was just like, and then it would, you know, it would take that high that you're getting and you're just like, uh. They just yeah. don't get it. It's more yeah. traditional. <laughs> but it doesn't yeah. mean that they're wrong, man. Like, I had to understand no. it and you had to. You they know. just want the best for you, you know. Yeah. And but now that I have a daughter. You're saving on beer? Yeah. When I yeah. started professional wrestling, my dad was always very supportive of it. Like, he wanted me to succeed in it, but, like, every step of the way, he was always like, I could get you a job over here at the plant. Like, you could start out mm -hmm. at, like, $25 an hour. He's like, you don't have to be hurting your body. When you're my age, you're not going to be able to walk. Like, what do you – and it's just like – he didn't, he wasn't like meaning to like try to get me to stop. But, and then like when I finally retired, like he was like telling me how like happy he was that I did it, but still it's just, I don't know. Maybe it's not just, a, maybe it's just a parent thing, but I feel like it, yeah. it comes from that Mexican side too, that they had such, they, everything they built was built on their backs. Like, and, yeah. and they don't want us to do that. So then like, whenever we want to go be starving artists, they're like, why are you doing that? Why are you choosing yeah. that? You know? <laughs> I mean, I'm a starving artist and my partner is a brewer, right? So both of us do our passions and we have to work very hard to make very little wait, 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 most of the you, time. Can I ask a question? Why did you call him your partner, not your boyfriend? Uh, well, no, I don't know because we're not married and boyfriend feels weird. I don't know. Anyway, so. Um, <laughs> I've just been trying to dissect why people call people partners. I don't know because I don't know. Um, but so, uh, now like I have this child that I'm watching grow and I'll tell you right now, I'm going to be so pissed if she's like, I want to be a comedian or I want to be a painter. I would murder her. No, you we're can't saving, You fucking can't. We're saving so much money for her call. I know it's just, it's a parent thing. Like you don't, I don't want her to struggle, you know? My, my no. body hurts so bad. I never want to show my kid professional wrestling. Yeah, see, well, it's the same thing. I don't want if she ever came to me and said, I want to be a comedian, I would lock her in a room. <laughs> don't want to die. They don't want to die, and then you're not able to survive is really <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, go ahead, Alejandro. Can I speak? No. <laughs> yeah. <Go ahead. laughs> okay. And I'm and I'm 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 gonna just direct this question and then after this, I gotta go. Okay. I'm gonna direct this to Holly and Ray. And be fucking okay. up on both of them. 
would you exchange any time in your life where you, like you said, a sold out crowd, a fucking everyone laughed their asses off? Ray, would you change that shit for the the, the best painting that you made or someone cried over it? They, then it's bullshit. You can't tell your kid no. If you see your kid working their asses off, but they want to do it, man, I would support the shit out of them, man. Right. That's right? true. Oh. That's true. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. For me, if someone comes up and I go, hey, I like your show. It's awesome. Uh, you know, Thank you for doing that. It's so cool. It's Every so cool. Low, low I've ever had is like, boom, right there, you know? Yeah. It's a great thing to like uh, emote. Uh, it, wait, is emote the, the word that I'm trying to say uh, of like releasing emotion? Yeah, yeah. Emote? Mm -hmm. to em yeah. If you cause someone to emote laughter, uh, love, or you you know you know what I mean, like because of art, like that's fucking great. That's like, it. That's yeah. So here's the thing: I went to Paris, and you have to go see the fucking Mona Lisa. Yeah, it is mm -hmm. great. But behind the Mona Lisa was the Napoleon, the coronation of Napoleon. Mm -hmm. Yes. That shit I saw for at least ten minutes. Oh yeah. Oh so grandiose, dude. You like, could stare at it all day and not take it all in. I heard Mona Lisa is really small. It it yeah. is, but <laughs> it's like this big. Yeah. Wow. But but having that, like that that the painter had that four or five hundred years ago. And it's the yeah. same thing. Like someone's gonna see a painting from Ray or or or, or a recording from Holly from like a stand-up show, and people are gonna laugh their asses off. And it's that's what's cool. And that's why it's like, imagine, yeah, if I have a kid that's like, oh, I want to be a filmmaker, I'd be like, I'm, not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try to not help you. <laughs> it's gonna be your kid's gonna have a screening, and they're gonna be like, well, I worked two years on this movie, and I didn't have the money that blah 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 had. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what your kid's gonna do. Your, your dad scores hazy. If you... <laughs> that blows my mind. And then I'll be all, your dad's uh, Alejandro. Jesus, you could get the money anywhere. Well, <laughs> I mean, shit. If I'll be up front with my kid. If he comes up, he or she comes up with a shitty fucking plot, I'll be like, hey, <laughs> that movie shouldn't be made. Uh, first of all, this movie, the plot. Second of all, your lighting, awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and they had years. so if you had two years why the fuck first of all did you yeah. not raise funds second uh, take what more camera you used to shoot this was it uh shit <laughs> <laughs> oh man well my mom took a different approach like when i started like getting into to film work she didn't support me at all until I, 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 I gave her proof that I was actually capable of doing any of this. <laughs> I was like, look, I'm actually on a TV show. That's me right there. She's all, okay. All right. <laughs> now you're, okay, I thought you were just making shit up. Smiley was, in, Smiley was yeah, in the Avengers. You went here and there. So, you were in the Avengers, Smiley. That's all you ever yeah, asked. Yeah, he's Loki. Badass. He was Loki. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, that's take that as a compliment, Smiley. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. It was, it was, the guy that they're comparing my... to you had sex with Taylor Swift. Wow. Nice, nice. <clears throat> All right, I gotta go. All right, well, hey, thank you for coming on. Uh, I thoroughly love the movie Monday. People should watch it if it's on Amazon Prime tomorrow for free at at what four twenty on uh, what time? Four well, it's on four twenty. And it's, yeah. I don't know, but maybe, I don't know if it is because it's apparently, yeah. surprisingly, there's a lot of people like uploading shit. So it's, there's a delay on uploads and publishing on the. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, definitely check out Monday. 22. Yeah. Uh, go, go to YouTube and watch the film Perps. Uh, it's got Lou Ferrigno in it. It's awesome. It's funny. It's 10 minutes. I mean, it's like 10 minutes of your life. And it's Thank hilarious. You. Thank you for coming on, Alejandro. Uh, you can you can duck out. We'll finish up the show. Well, I guess we'll I guess we'll carry the rest of the show for you. Sorry, guys. I have to let you down. Have, have a great night. Thank you. All right, thank man. Thank you. you. Really nice. Bye. To thank you. you. Take care. Boom. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I've been trying to get that guy on the show for like two years. It's been tough because, like, you know, whenever that show came out, he was like on the top. You know. Yeah. 
uh, he was like just kicking ass and taking names and all like he was you know doing uh, interviews all over the place and you know think you know the one th- one good thing about this pandemic is i've been able to pin people down <laughs> i'm like well, where, where, are you, where are you gonna be at where are you are at you me you uh, don't have internet right right so i saw somebody in the chat had commented about how uh contract workers can now get unemployment so i would like to share a life lesson that i learned this week um Yes, that is totally, totally true. Unless your life's work is uh, freelance writing for maybe a hundred, two hundred dollars at a time, so people don't find it necessary to have you sign a ten ninety nine because you're never going to work for them again. Oh. I have no proof of employment, so I literally am screwed right now. Ouch. Yeah, so oh, it's fun at the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a tough one. So you have no? Did you get the twelve hundred dollars? Did anybody ever get their uh, their? their I got check? mine. Yeah. I haven't gotten mine yet. Hamster got his, and he. James? It looks like he's getting unemployment. So. Okay, James, did you get yours? What I do you guys did. Do what are you spending twelve hundred dollars bills or just random sh- like you're like? Well, I wouldn't have normally twelve hundred dollars. Fuck it. I uh, we're getting groceries. <laughs> So yeah, so you're just wasting your money just buying groceries? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we you know what sucks is our four year old is in the middle of a growth spurt and she eats like seven million times a day. So Shit. It's, yeah. I'm like, do well, you have to have a growth spurt in the middle of a pandemic? <laughs> that's that's when you're like that's when you're happy that the kid likes hot dogs and like macaroni and cheese. Because that's like yeah. <laughs> You're like we're gonna eat hot dogs and macaroni and cheese again, and they're like, "Hell yeah!" And you're like, "That's she I loves am. little Smokies." So her oh, new God. thing is she doesn't like warm food, and she'll eat little Smokies uncooked, well, which cooked. is fine because they're fully cooked. But yeah, like, I was uh, not a picky child, as you can imagine. I uh, yeah. would eat whatever was put in front of me. But uh, whenever I was very young. I was at my my dad's mom's house, my grandma, and she's very Mexican. And I told her that I didn't eat Mexican food because I was white. And she says, "No, you're not. You're not white. You're Mexican. I'm Mexican. Your grandpa's Mexican. Your dad's Mexican. That makes you Mexican." So she made me eat Mexican food, and I loved it. And so whenever <laughs> I went home for like a week, and like like a couple weeks after that. I wouldn't eat food unless my mom told me it was Mexican food. So she's like, nice. like oh, is this sandwich Mexican food? She's like, yes, it's Mexican food. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Totally Mexican. So you yeah. left out the I part. Had a, you, left, you left out the part. I had a like, hey. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm white. <laughs> no, yeah, you're not. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I had a period of time when I was about Danny's age where my dad had explained where meat came from. And I was vegetarian. And my parents would just tell me that hamburgers and chicken nuggets and chicken and like everything was vegetables. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and luckily, Danny isn't too picky. Like sometimes she'll throw a fit. Like the other day, I made a pork roast and she liked the meat, but we wanted her to try gravy and she lost it for a minute. And then we're like, just taste it. And now she loves gravy. So she's not too bad, but good God, she snacks. So much all day. <laughs> I just remember when I was a kid, like, you know, I liked, you know, be- macaroni's and I liked hot dogs, hated beans. And then I made beans yesterday. Really? I love beans now. But like, I just remember when I was a kid, like, you know, how they would, your parents would bring out something and, it, and if it looked like vegetables, you're like, no, I don't want that. I just remember mm. the first time I ever had coleslaw and mm. it, I, I looked at it like basically a salad had thrown up, you know, <laughs> coleslaw. Yeah. And I, I just remember, like, my mom's like, just try it. And I, like, try it. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah. I think coleslaw is fucking amazing. Right. And I yeah. Coleslaw all the time. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. You and know what just, Danny is really into is asparagus right now. Yeah. Which Ooh. is weird. That is weird. Did your parents ever tell you that thing? They were like, just try it. Just try it. Mm-hmm. So have you thrown that back on your parents ever? Uh, yes. 
Mm-hmm. Like I do sushi. I love sushi. And my so mom don't and be racist. Just try it. Just try it. See, <laughs> just try and, uh, it. My mom's like, you can't eat sushi. That'll kill you. It's raw. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's what's happening. People are just dying of sushi all over. And the, the media is <laughs> just covering it up right and left. And finally, I was like, just my, try it. Just try it. <laughs> yeah, just try I, it. I was, my, I was pretty nervous. My dad's I not so sushi today. And I wasn't sure if leftover sushi was okay or not, but you oh, know, I thought you said eat. gas station sushi. Did you say gas station sushi? No, 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 no. Leftover. leftover. Oh, yeah. Okay. Phew. It should be fine as long as it was refrigerated. Well, right. it was, but you know, TBD. I haven't died yet. Yeah. Well, here's hoping. Scenario: Get some botulism. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, my dad's not so bad. My dad will eat like anything. But my mom, I lately I've been like, mom, just try it. Just try it. If you don't like it after you try it. And then I was like, wow, how the tables have turned. Yeah. What is, <laughs> like your parents are like, when you're all growing up, they're, and what they're really saying is, we didn't have a lot of money. So just eat it. <laughs> is what they really yeah. realized that. Just eat it. Now that yeah. I'm a parent who's poor, yes, that's what it is. Yeah. Just, just eat the stupid it. food. <laughs> yeah. Shut the fuck up. All right. Um, to this day, what is the what is the one food from your childhood that you still eat today? That's like not normal, like or that's kitty or whatever you might say. Oh, I I still love chicken strips for one thing, but okay. I my dad made this macaroni, tuna, onions, and peas like mixture, hmm. and okay. it has to be made with like the Velveeta mac and cheese, uh, not the powdery one. And right, right. I oh, yeah. love oh, that the thing where you, so you much. Do this with the packet. Yeah, <laughs> and the cheese comes and out. And so it's it's that and tuna and peas and onions, and I love that so much. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that again. I'm sorry. I said that when the cheese comes out, when you go, <laughs> and the yellow yeah. liquid thing comes out of the packet. Because mm-hmm. I don't necessarily know if it's cheese. I don't think it's it is. you know it's cheese adjacent. So I still eat. Spaghettios with uh, Franks, and Ooh. I'm going to the store here, and they're just getting wiped out. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Because everybody has their kids them. at home, that's why. And I can't get them. I can't get them at all. My mine's not as weird. I just PB and J is always going to have a place in my heart. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches mm. are always going to be a comfort food for me. Uh, do you do Imager Ray? No. Oh, so on Imager, like recently, there was there's like the big like push is like these uh, people outside of the United States asking people from the United States if things are real. And one of them was, do people in the United States really eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Or is that just in the movies? Oh, hell yes, we do. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, oh, wow, yeah, that's crazy. And they're like, why would you cut the crusts off? Because like, I don't know if you've ever been outside the United States, but like, our bread is so like weirdly generic compared to the bread outside of the world. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then I would never cut crusts off, but uh, Smothers, I think is the name of the brand, made uncrustables. Yeah. yeah. I loved those. Yeah. Did you ever and you know the, what? Uh, those okay. are the best dimension ever. <laughs> well, did you ever have, Ray, I don't know if this is like too early for you, did you ever have the PB, the peanut butter and jelly that was in the same jar? <gasps> Goober. Yes. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then I remember when they did the grape jelly and it was in like the ketchup squeeze bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was the shit. Let's see. What was that called? P- that was during yeah. the weird time whenever they had like the Shrek ketchup that was like green. Yeah. yeah. Same jar. Let me see. I'll be right back, guys. Be oh, right it is back. Called Goober. You're right. Yeah. Uh, there it is. Oh, the Uncrustables. There they are. Yeah. Oh my God. There's an Uncrustables sweatshirt that you can buy. Seen <laughs> to believe. Hold on. Let me let me put the let me put this up here. Yeah. This is fantastic. This is an Uncrustables sweatshirt that you can buy. <laughs> Whoa, that is trashy. <laughs> Sixty dollars. They went down. They went down a little bit. They saved twenty percent. Jesus. As <laughs> time and Buzzfeed. What the fuck? 
I never had. No, a- that looks like uh, idiocracy. Whenever we they started wearing like all the brand names and all the clothing. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, I love this program where I could just be like, "Check this out, guys." <laughs> but you're right, though. That is, but it was Goober. Uh, huh, sorry. So the one thing as an adult that I found out uh, that I found out that people don't like that blows my mind is grape jelly. People I like, love grape jelly. Me too. See, I love it. The other way around, it was either grape or nothing at all, and I've really branched out now. Yeah, well, Billy, like Billy, Billy. I'd have grape jelly, and I was like, "Don't you want grape jelly?" And Billy's like, "No, it's gross." Like, we gross. only have grape jelly in our house because it's especially know. Bama grape jelly is the best grape jelly. I don't, I don't even think grape jelly tastes like grape like grapes. And I loved the grape flavoring, whether it's yeah. grape popsicles, grape Jolly Ranchers, like it was just everything. Yeah, yes, every yes, that same. Mm-hmm. So. uh Here's a tidbit, Holly. When you make, if you ever make barbecue little smokies, yeah, you just, you basically just put you just basically put little smokies in a in a crock pot, dump in like a whole thing of like a, a, a barbecue sauce, and then a whole spoonful of grape jelly. And, oh, and the grape jelly. I might do that this weekend. The grape jelly makes it stick, and you don't. Ooh. Taste it. Yep. I'm going to do that this weekend for the little one. Just have like a crock pot of little Smokies sitting around. Oh, crock pot. oh fuck yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing I'll, I'll use grape jelly for. I grew up on marmalade, so I was like, I don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I uh, like marmalade, too. Whoa, Paddington. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a Paddington I like there. orange yeah. marmalade on my toast. I had some marmalade sandwiches. With my peanut butter <laughs> spread. <laughs> Didn't have peanut butter. That's such a so I remember when I was 18 and I, and I uh, graduated high school and I flew to, to Germany and I was staying with a family and I learned about the uh, awesomeness of uh, what's it's called? The, the hazelnut spread. The, um, oh, Nutella. Nutella. Because they didn't have it in the United States. I'd never heard of it in my fucking life. Yeah. And they would That's get where the- I learned about it, too. And so like over there, they, their bread is not a joke. Like the bread in Europe is not a joke. It'll it'll fucking not if you're if you have a gluten allergy you're just gonna die. You're you know? done. It's like just black. Like the, some of the bread is like black. Some of it's brown. Some of it's a light brown. I never saw like white bread. Never saw that ever. So they would like cut these slices off. They would like cut a sandwich slice, you know, and then they would put uh, peanut butter and uh, Nutella. And I was just like, so good. Fucking crack rock. You know? you know what's even better is fluffernutters. Have you ever had a fluffernutter? Yes. So yeah. I take a fluffernutter. I put peanut butter, Nutella, marshmallow fluff, and what then I that? grill it like a grilled cheese sandwich. What is that, James? Organic whole rye? Yeah, this is one pound of just rye bread. Nothing else in there. Oh. Just whole rye. Oh, wow. Wow. You could, it's a brick. You could hit someone with this. <laughs> This is real bread. This is not American bread. This is like bread. he has it like <laughs> hanging on a string above the door frame, like Home Alone style. So it'll swing down <laughs> and hit an intruder. Nice. Like when I, whenever I see in like foreign movies, someone wanders out the door with just toast for breakfast. I'm like, how's that work? And then you get bread like this, and you're like, oh, I see how that works. <laughs> that's an actual meal. Wow, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's. That makes sense, but I yeah, I still eat, you know, every once in a while, mac and hot dogs, mm. kind of hot dogs and macaroni and cheese. Or totally yeah, good. we've been eating a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> Our kid loves it, and you know what? I've been craving it lately. I think I've been craving comfort foods through yeah. this whole thing, and so every time Jason will make it for the baby, I'll be like, you know what? I'll have that too. That's funny. <laughs> Because I'm also five on the inside. <laughs> you know what? I mean, if, you know, in this in this day and age with the pandemic and like being in the house all the time, having anxiety, it, a little comfort food is like good. You're just kind of like, oh, man, I yeah. feel, makes me feel comfortable. It makes me feel good. It makes your soul feel good. Yeah, totally, man. When I made those beans, I, you know, I actually made it with like a, I threw in like two slices of bacon and like mm. beans is like the only thing I'll, I'll make where I don't, me- I'm, I'm really like, whenever I read a recipe, I'm totally about measuring everything out. Beans, I'm just like, choo, 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 choo. <laughs> boop, good. <laughs> you know, good. 
Uh, I ooh. think. Interesting. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. I'm not much of a baker. Yeah. Cook, but I can. I don't know about bake. My baking skills are not there. Blue corn is so good. That's one of my favorite. It is. Like of culinary food yeah. in, in Albuquerque that I got. Like blue corn mush, blue corn waffles, blue corn bread. Oh. Like, blue yeah. corn whiskey. All you had to say was waffles, right? And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Tia Betty Blues, uh, they have the uh, – uh, their location off like near like Zuni, it, yeah. it's like real south San Mateo, and they have those blue corn waffles over there. So, Tia Bia's Waffleria, yeah. Oh, it's on well, uh, right. so the Waffleria and Tia Betty Blues are, I guess, like owned by the same parent company, correct? But Tia Betty Blues is the one that I was that I always like, yeah. Get to. The, I've never been to the, the, the that one, I've only been to yeah. the Waffleria. The Waffleria is, the a- is good, but Tia Betty Blues is so good. It's, it's Blues, very intimate. It's very small. It's off uh, mm-hmm. Gibson and I want to say San Pedro, but that may not be. No, Gibson San and Mateo. San Pedro. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's right there. Mm-hmm. I've driven past it many times, never eaten there, but I've had Tia B's. The Waffleria, yeah. if you get up in the morning, whenever there's not a pandemic, if you get up in the morning and it opens at 8, if you get there by 9, line out the door packed yeah, yeah. There, packed. it's amazing and it's waffles but it's like every kind of waffle. like have you had the waffles there where they're um oh fuck flaky waffles yes <laughs> almost like a croissant yeah of waffle Ledia is quite the talented baker so Ooh, I, that's really? been one of the nice things about being uh you know social distancing with her is that she's been making quite a lot of baked goods a lot of delicious Ooh. Yeah. i've been making like uh a lot of roasts and uh like cooking every night and i'm really enjoying it but i have perfected all day simmered spaghetti sauce mm-hmm. Ooh. I'm very proud of that. Nice. Good deal. I learned how to make brownies. Apparently, they're really easy. Yeah. Yeah. That brownies are pretty easy. You, you just get the mix like, to the store. Well, well, no, it's just there's, I didn't realize it's just flat. Like, you don't need yeast or anything. It's just no. flour and sugar, some water and oil, and some baking cocoa and butter. Like, yep. Marijuana oil. Right. Marijuana butter. <laughs> just you know? I don't keep that in my pantry, but I mean, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Very cool. Uh, I, I think I've, you know, we're, we're, we've gone as far as we should today. Yes. Yeah. What do you think of Alejandro? I think he's great. Yeah. I, I've been wanting to get that guy for a long time. And I really feel like, you know, we had him on this show and like two years from now, we're going to be like, holy shit, we had this guy. We had this guy on our show. Yeah. <laughs> If you, if you know, I don't know how I can do it, but I can let you guys have access to my YouTube. Um, that show, I want to watch that. It's crazy because, like, you know, now that he's not on here and he's like being super humble, he smokes everybody on that show. There's five of them, and you can kind of tell, like, a couple of them they were actresses or actors or whoever, and they you were trying to use this to like further that. And he wasn't mm-hmm. he was like, I'm a director and I'm here to direct movies. And he never in that show do you see him not kick ass. Like he never. He's like, one of the hardest workers in town, I think. Yeah, and um, he doesn't cry, and he's no bullshit either. Like if right. you, you kind of dick him around a little bit, he's like, "Hey, I'll just go somewhere else." Boom. And, and you're like, yeah. the, what I've actually heard about him uh, from people like in the film community and stuff. Like, yeah, I know him. He's a great guy. I mean, sometimes he comes off as an asshole because he's so direct, but yeah. like. He's a great guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you get shit done though. You know? Yeah. yeah. He, he, you know, if you can help him, cool. If you can't, he's like, boom, on to the next person. Right. And, and I, and I understand that. And it's like, and he comes off in that, but the crazy thing in that show was, is once it wasn't a competition and he was just like, these other people, you could clearly tell they were deer in the headlights. Mm. Yeah. And a scene where he's like, he's already got his equipment and everything ready to go. And then he stops and he like literally goes, I wonder if everyone else thought to get their equipment before the place closed down today. And then he just starts texting everybody. Hey, the place closes at this time. Did you guys get your equipment? And he goes up to somebody and he goes, did you get your grip equipment? And they're just like, my what? Yeah. Like, your grip equipment, like all the stuff to make the movie. And they're like, no. And he's like, well, it's closed now. 
so if you know he's like well i mean i guess what we could do is like you could use half of it of mine and or you can use mine and that's the that. sign of a truly talented person is somebody yeah. who is willing to yeah. um help as long as you get your work done there's no okay. reason to not help another person right. i think truly talented people don't have that insecurity where you have to cut another person down yeah and i'll try to get my hands on the movie monday it's it's fantastic like for seven thousand dollars you're like holy shit this is actually really good and um he ended up being kind of the poster child for the whole show because that's amazing when you watch the show it's like all these people struggle and da 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 and if you go look on i didn't see it on the show but everybody, if you go look on IMDb at their movies, the, the five movies, everyone is like five out of ten. Like they're below five out of ten on IMDb, except for him. Wow. He's seven out of ten for a $7,000 movie. No. That's pretty great. Yeah. It, well, and it, I think, you know, you want to talk about people to support that are like hometown people. Like he's one of He's gonna make it because he's such a hard worker. I hope so. Because like some of the other ones in the show, they're already on like bigger prize because they just had. Uh, sadly, in life, always the best doesn't always get the you know you know yeah. the prize. So sadly in life, ne- I mean I've always said this: networking is key to life. And it's some of the true. other people, even though their their movie not may not be the best of the whole five. They're like bigger projects working, you know, because they just they just knew people. Yeah. Sad. So anyway, like anyway, I could help him get the word out. And he was like, you know, he he he's I've been trying to get him for a long time. And then we went on the show and he was like, When do I get to do your show? And I was like, I've asked you many times. I said, but you know, hey, how about next Sunday? And then I made him just lock into it. So and uh, nice. you know, he, he ended up having that movie coming out. And uh Ray, you should watch it. It's only 10 minutes. Yeah, but it, it's, it's really good. You can tell it's good, yeah. So. See, this is funny, Chris, because you realize like all the ten drink minimum like chats go to my phone too. Yeah, I do. So <laughs> I okay. Everybody yeah, is a shit. I, I saw should. your conversation with him. He's all, I want to be on your show. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I know, and and I and I wanted to see everyone to see that, and you know, I'm glad. So uh, with that, anybody got anything to promote? Uh, I just have my podcast. Uh, yeah. How's that going? I mean, is, are you getting some traction? Is uh... uh, we're not getting a lot of traction, but that's okay because we're working out kinks. So okay. right now, it's just kind of like figuring out our rhythm and what we want um, to do. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard. It's really yeah. hard. Um, <laughs> but it's for us right now. It's more fun than anything else. Uh, sure. But we lost a whole episode, so we have to re-record it tomorrow. <laughs> I only. I knew you, you would love that. I knew oh, you would you love that. Know, you know, I want to love that, yeah, because I've lo- I've lost hundreds of episodes. <sighs> we <laughs> we almost lost it. We almost fought over it. It's uh, being a couple and trying to do that is uh, difficult. So. Yeah, I've lost more shows than I want to admit. Oh man, this is <laughs> <the time laughs> just, uh, I yeah. thought the camera was on. <laughs> Our whole, Man, uh, we were so mad too. Oh my god! It oh. and then it was just it wasn't anybody's fault. It was just a thing that happened. So the tenth anniversary show. There's no video because Billy didn't turn the video on. Oh no! <laughs> uh, the whole podcast uh, film uh, festival we did at uh, um, at uh, what was the place? Press Club. We're the only one that don't have video because James didn't turn the video on. That was me. Yeah. yeah. I got too caught up with the other nice. podcasts. Yeah. So. For some reason on ours, I didn't put the video on. It is what it is. It is what it is. So <laughs> laugh and go on, and that's the story down the line. So yeah. So. <laughs> anyway. tight. Uh James, what do you got? Uh yeah. Well, uh, have fun with all your streaming needs. Uh, you can see me on the second season of Midnight Texas on uh, NBC or on Hulu uh, or uh, just watch Daybreak because it's a fun series and you can see me in the background there too. Those are my two favorite things right now. I don't know what's going Yay. on with that. Ray, what do you got? Uh, you can follow me on pretty much any social media under Ray Basuda. You can also follow some of my artwork on uh, Basuda Paint on Instagram and Facebook. But uh, that's about it really other than what we're doing here on Tendrink. Yeah. 
Uh, and we're live here every Sunday night from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, with this quarantine pandemic, I'm trying to get more guests like, uh, you know, Alejandro that are just really, you know, harder to get and fun. Lauren Poole, you know, Amanda Michonne, all those fun ones. I don't know who I'm going to get for next week, but I mean, it's, it's, it's been easier. <laughs> Tom Cruise? Question mark? Question mark. Yeah. Uh, you can... Uh, like us on com forward slash tendrink. I do uh, random little uh, live shows where I talk to just the chat room. Um, our uh, Instagram is uh, at tendrink. Actually, Holly and I did one of those one night, and that was it was fun. It was yeah. like we were drinking together at a bar. Yeah, and then all of a sudden Ming Chen showed up <laughs> and then drank. I know, and crazy. <laughs> he showed up. You left, and then he and I stayed up till like two in the morning. Um, oh man. Like a bar. So you never know what's going to happen there. Uh, it could be Tom Cruise, question mark. Um, Cameron Diaz? <laughs> Cameron, Cameron Diaz. Cameron. Cameron. Uh, so, yeah, uh, our website's tenderingminimum.com. Um, other than that, I'm good to go. Everyone stay safe out there. Uh, I bought some hand sanitizer at uh, Tractor Brewing. And yeah. it, it's great, except it smells like farts. But that's cool. I mean, you know. It smells like sulfur is what I'm really saying. But uh, you guys all stay safe out there. Um, I love you guys. Everyone, I want everybody to come out the other side of this. So don't be dumb and go out and buy a, uh, a cake at Whole Foods on a Saturday. <laughs> like I tried to do. Uh, but yeah, happy 420 tomorrow, everyone. With that, we are. We are. Uh, drink. 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 Minimum. Minimum. I'm trying to think with you guys. You guys are fucking me up. I'm not even star. I'm not even trying. <laughs> uh, have fun, everyone. See ya. <laughs>